Good afternoon. This is May 17th, 2012. We are in Natick, Massachusetts, and this tape is part of the Morris Institute Library's continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Maureen Sullivan. Our cameraman is Dan McDermott of Natick Pegasus. This is a home front interview, and we are privileged to have with us today Sadie Stepner. Welcome, Sadie. Thank you. May I ask when you were born? February 22nd, 1914. Where were you born? In uh, Charlotte Avenue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's in Boston? In Boston. And what town do you live now? I live in Natick. Okay. And how long have you lived in Natick? Since 1954. Since 1954? Yeah. Okay. Do you have children? Three. Three children? A boy and two girls. And any grandchildren? Yes. Two. Two? Three, two boys, two, three girls. Three, three, right? Three grandchildren. Yeah. Mm -hmm. grandchildren. And you have great grandchildren as well? Do I? Five, I do. Well, I believe I ever can see them. <laughs> Before the interview, um, your daughter Lorraine was kind enough to uh, tell us a little bit about um, what life was like for you in Boston when you were growing up, including uh, your grandfather and the stables at Franklin Park. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, he had, um, you know, he rented them out. Mm -hmm. You know, people would bring their horses and he'd have them in his stable. Mm -hmm. And he'd charge them for keeping the horses and mm -hmm. cleaning them and, you know, taking yeah. care of them. And I'm, I'm, I stand corrected. It was your father who ran the stables. Yes, my father owned and, them. And did you visit him in the stables? Well, we always visit, like on Sundays, the mm -hmm. Saturdays, the Sundays. Yeah. And your, uh, your mother or your grandmother had a farm in Medway? Medway. And that was your mother? And my grandmother. Your grandmother. Yeah, my mother's mother. Okay. And tell us what that was like. Did you ever go to that farm? Oh, we always went. In fact, I, don't I point it out to you? I always find that, oh, my grandma lived over there. Oh, who lives there now? <laughs> it was a, um, well, it wasn't a big farm because it was only my grandfather and my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And whoever came there would help out. But she all, we always planted. Mm -hmm. Whenever we, she had a plant, she said, who's coming to help me? So we always came, you know, mm -hmm. dig with our hands at that time, you know, we weren't so rich, we could all have sorrows, mm -hmm. our hands, our breaks, and plants. Mm -hmm. Well, mostly cucumbers, radishes, you know, mm -hmm. the um, kind of things that she would eat and have my grandfather and grandmother would have afterwards. And the tomatoes naturally had to go up in the mm -hmm. thing there right near the house, you know, yeah. so nobody would steal them. <laughs> and um, we also had cabbage. She liked cabbage and mm -hmm. we used to do. So we came like in, after, you know, school was out, we could come there and help her. How did you get from Boston to Medway? Did it's you... a house and buggy. Wow. So, uh... What do you remember about growing up in Boston in those days? Well, I was on Charmant Avenue, right? Mm -hmm. And then we, uh, well, there was um, a, a school behind me. Mm -hmm. I can see that now, a red brick school behind the apartment house that, you know, all I would do is jump over the fence mm -hmm. and go into school. And um, in the front of the house was a car, you know, the street cars okay. go by. Mm -hmm. And um, 
or further down. See, we lived here. And here's the, the thing. Mm -hmm. Then there was a street that went where there was a, was a, um, well, a building of, public building. And further down were houses. Mm -hmm. You know, there were two family, three family houses. Mm -hmm. And people, of course, I didn't go as far as there. I just was taken to school. Mm -hmm. or the school in the back of me. So I didn't know too much what was down there, but I can see it even now, how, how it was. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, then on this side, you went to Dudley Street. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a street that you went up, you walked up in Dudley Street with the uh, street cars go by. Mm -hmm and all the other cars. Now, do you remember uh, some of the events and personalities in Boston during that period? Like uh, James Michael Curley, for example. Oh, Curley was, <laughs> everybody knew Curley. And, um, well, we had radio, and if Curley was on, we, we would walk down that street, and he would be in the, like, he could come by, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and wave to everybody. And he was a person that everybody could go to. I mean, he would try to help. Of course, I didn't, uh, that I read everything about, but at that time, as a young teacher, Youngster, we don't read about things like that mm -hmm. that happened, you know, during the time. And he would help people. And that was the thing that we liked about him, because he helped people. Mm -hmm. If you need something, you went to him. If he could do it for you, he did it. Mm -hmm. Now, you grew up in a Jewish family. Yes. What was uh, that like? Did you experience any discrimination? No, we didn't have too much. We lived in an area where there were a lot of mixed. And I never had any experience mm -hmm. of that kind. My brothers had fights now and then, but it wasn't, I don't think about that. They just had arguments or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He used to come home and say, uh, my mother would say, well, what happened to the blouse? Oh, this kid tried to take it away from me, and I said he couldn't have it, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. But um, I didn't find, if I can still remember anything about, because um, my brothers would, my brother, older brother, Mac, would go sometime to the stable to help my father. Mm -hmm. So sometimes he wasn't home. And um, my sisters and, did I have another brother? I have Mackie and? Nat. Nat, yeah. Well, Nat was the oldest. Mac was the youngest. Uh, Nat. And then Harold was the youngest. And Harold, well, he was born when I, we moved. Um, Nat lived with my, see, my mother was divorced. And he lived with my father, you know, mm -hmm. my mother's first husband, and my older brother, Nat. And Mac and I lived with my mother. Mm -hmm. My mother had permission from the courts to have my brother, Nat, but at that time she couldn't take care of three children. So my, she went to my first mother. Mm -hmm. And what did your mother do for a living? My mother worked for the foresters. Mm -hmm. And when she went to, um, at the foresters, she would go to the people's houses that didn't show up and collect money for the foresters. Mm -hmm. You know, their dues. So that's what she did most of the time. Mm -hmm. She didn't work other than that. And the Foresters were a charity organization? Yes. Okay. 
I don't know if it still is. Is there a bar? Uh, I don't. I couldn't say. Yeah, I think it might be still around, but maybe a small, mm -hmm. you know, existence. But my mother was always with the Farishes. Mm -hmm. She was the president of the of it, and she was the vice president, she was everything. Mm -hmm. But she mostly went to collect money for them, mm -hmm. you know, so that they would be able to, the dues, mm -hmm. so the Farishes would, you know, be able to exist. Mm -hmm. And part of your childhood, you got to see the Boston Red Sox. What were oh, they like? Oh, God, I loved it. The, I, be, I was taken by everybody. Say, do you want to come? Out I went. <laughs> Any fellow that would call, say, hey, do you want to go? Out I went. <laughs> I loved them. Mm -hmm. Babe Ruth, DiMaggio, the others, oh, they were marvelous. Mm -hmm. and, and like I, I say, when I see the guys that are playing now, <laughs> They need to go back to learn. <laughs> Let's uh, go up a few years to the time of the Great Depression. And what was that like for you? I know you graduated in 1932 from Roxbury? Memorial High School. Mm -hmm. Roxbury Memorial High School. And what was the um, what was uh, high school like? Well, it was like, yeah, I think, well, at that time, there were boys and girls together, mm -hmm. and um, I didn't see any, if I can still remember. All girls, 750 girls. Yeah, 150 girls, yeah, that's okay. right. But boys were in like another room, you know, mm -hmm. right off like that room. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, study anything in particular while you were in high school? No, I was lucky to graduate. Okay. And what did you do after you graduated? I worked for Jordan Marsh Company. And what did you do at Jordan Marsh? I was a salesperson. And then I did um, decorating, you know. I decorated cakes and stuff. Yes, tell us a little bit about um, your ba your experiences in baking. Well, I am an ex I'm a professional baker. Mm -hmm. And who did you learn from? How did you learn? Well, we learned it at some of it in school. Then I worked for S.S. Pierce. S. S. Pierce's, and I learned there. Mm -hmm. They taught me how mm -hmm. to decorate and do things, not to bake because mm -hmm. the men did the baking. Ah. We did only the decorating. Mm -hmm. We didn't do any baking. And uh, from there, we're, I went to North End the North to make marzipan. Marzipan and mm -hmm. all the other, to learn how to do that. Mm -hmm. And then, I, what, what was the name of the other bakery that I worked at? Anley's, Anley's Bakery. Mm -hmm. and there's where I stayed for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then you retired. And then you and then I retired. Okay. I said, that's enough. <laughs> okay, well, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, but let's get back to um, around the time of the Great Depression. What do you remember about that? Well, if I can remember correctly, mm -hmm. um, we still lived on Charmin Avenue, right? And Devon Street and Brunswick Street. Oh, De Devon and Brunswick, yeah, mm -hmm. Devon Street. And uh, like I say, my father still was in the horse business, mm -hmm. you know, rented horses and things. And uh, like I worked for Jordan Marsh and also, um, I can remember the house that we lived in, mm -hmm. and it was a one-family house that we got, we lived in, and uh, I just, like, I was, they used to call me my kid brother's and sister's mother whenever I went out on the street. Mm -hmm. Oh, here comes your mother. You know, me, because I took care of them, because mm -hmm. my mother went to work, or 
for the foresters, and mm -hmm. I was home. I was mm -hmm. the maid, mm -hmm. the cook, the housekeeper, mm -hmm. everything that went on. Uh, there was just a mention about coupons. What do you remember about those? Well, if we, if we got coupons through the mail, or if we cut them out, we could go into the store, and there was only certain things that you could buy. You can't buy everything. If they had butter on sale, you'd go, mm -hmm. and they'd give you a quarter of a pound, or the most, a half a pound mm -hmm. of butter. But at that time, we were very orthodox, mm -hmm. and we were very kosher, so we only bought things that were kosher. We didn't buy anything that wasn't. Right. And um, it was more expensive than any other things mm -hmm. because we would get the food that was top, that came right from the mm -hmm. vegetable markets. We would get the freshest because mm -hmm. we would pay a few pennies more. Right. And. Uh, I didn't find, the only thing I found that we couldn't get too much was creamery. Was what? Creamery. Creamery, okay. Yeah. I mean, that was things that they didn't have too much of because of the farmers. And if they didn't, of course, they like import it now, but they never did before. The mm -hmm. farmers didn't have it. And if the farmers got a better price than, mm -hmm. say, this store that we bought from, mm -hmm. we didn't get it. Okay. During this time when you're a young woman working at Jordan Marsh and S.S. Pierce, uh, were you paying any attention to what was happening overseas, say in Germany? Well, I was uh, uh, really Germany because I couldn't stand the thought of what they were doing to the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. And I used to say that, and my mother said, you live in America, you don't live in Germany. I said, but they're Jewish people. She says, well, then the Jewish people have to make sure they go where they're supposed to go, to the Jewish country. Because. Mm -hmm. My mother was more concerned that we had enough to eat mm -hmm. and that we, you know, were able to get it. And she always, and of course our house was, you could eat on the floors <laughs> in my house. We could say there was an age. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got married in 1939. Okay, you were married in 1938. Yeah. And tell us about your husband. He was, uh, at that time, uh, the newspaper, but mm -hmm. he had, you know, he wasn't in, say, the Herald Travel. He was working for them, mm -hmm. but he had his own wagon horse and wagon, that he would, uh, you know, get newspapers mm -hmm. and go from place to place. And what was his name, by the way? Uh, Neil. Neil? N-E-I-L. Okay. So, you mean my father? Maya. No, no, your husband. My husband was Neil. My father was Maya. Okay. So your husband had a horse and wagon and he used to deliver newspapers yeah. throughout Boston? Yeah, all around, yeah. That must have been a sight. Well, it was hot. Mm -hmm. You know, you had to make sure the horse was all right. <laughs> you Very had to have true. a good horse, otherwise, <laughs> so he would go to my father. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, my father would look over the horse and say, that's no good, and go and find him another, you know, buy him another horse. My father was a first Russian horseman. Mm -hmm. 
And he knew horses like we know children. Okay, so let's go ahead now to the day the United States was attacked at Pearl Harbor. What do you remember that day? It was December 7th, 1941. Well, like I say, I was in the kitchen mm -hmm. doing what I had to do, and I had the radio on, and I heard that, and I said, what are they talking about? I almost fell off the chair. I was, you know, doing work when I said, what's happening? And then my brothers came in and said, Ma, do you know what's happening? And I looked at them and said, it's a war? He says, yeah, I might have to go to war. I said, you have to, you have to. I said, because you're too young to go to war. Mm -hmm. He was about 15, 16, but he would have gone, believe mm -hmm. me, because <laughs> all my cousins went. Yeah, which leads us to the next. Oh, by the way, um, when you were hearing this on the radio, were you and your husband living in a house of your own, or no, we were in an apartment. An apartment. I'm sure that, but it was the rain. Brunswick Street. Oh, Brunswick Street. So yeah. you're still living in Boston. Yeah. Okay. And you were able to get everybody to help you with food because of the grocer. Yeah. Tell us about that with the grocer. Well, you went to a grocer. Mm -hmm only because you went to him before, mm -hmm. not a new one. They wouldn't take new people mm -hmm. because they had to take care of their old customers. Right. And whenever I needed anything, they'd say, don't come today, come tomorrow, because they would be able to get from me mm -hmm. what I needed. But we had... We did not go hungry and need it to the children, but they didn't have, uh, we didn't have a lot of the pleasures, you know, mm -hmm. extra, like they have a lot of ice cream, a lot of cake. I did my own baking, so mm -hmm. they had plenty of cakes and cookies. Mm -hmm. And, um, because that was my business. Mm -hmm. And, um, But, I mean, it wasn't, like I say, he would only give to the people that always, any of the stores that I went to, that we shopped before. Mm -hmm. New ones that have weight. If they would say, oh, I see this here, yes, well, that was already sold. Ooh. It wasn't sold, but it was sold. Right. You see, they would not give to strangers because they figured that they were only coming there because they couldn't find it anywhere else. Mm -hmm. They went to regular customers. Right. Now, by the time the war broke out, you're not only married, did you also have a child? Yeah. And when, a uh, boy or girl? Donald. I have Donald, a boy. Donald, okay. And because of that, your husband wasn't immediately drafted. Yes, that's right. He was kind of kept on a waiting list. Yeah, yeah. And what did he do during the war? The same thing. Just? Yeah. Stole the horse yeah. and ride it? Yeah, and he also, at that okay. time, he went into the Union. Union. Of, mm -hmm. the, of the Boston Herald, mm -hmm. the Herald Travel. He was into the Union, mm -hmm. so he had a, was able to learn how to drive a truck. And he, he had his own, but his route wasn't close to home. Mm -hmm. His route was way out in, say, Stoughton or someplace further than where we were. And without 128 at the time, that must have Don't been a know. trek. <laughs> he would get home 7 o'clock at night. Mm -mm. But look, it, it was a job. Yeah. And during the war, if it was a job, you had a job. Mm -hmm. So, and what did you do during the war? Well, I only did, like I say, whatever anybody needed. Mm -hmm. Any help. Mm -hmm. 
uh, people couldn't take care of their children. And when I say to you, could you take care of him today? I have to do this. So I'd take care for, for them. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I didn't do any work because by that time, I think I had two, two, two children. And I thought that was enough for me. I didn't need any more if I, you know, did the other work. Mm -hmm. But we, I had, like I said, the temple, and that was a lot of for me. Mm -hmm. I, the temple and I were very close, mm -hmm. and if they needed help, I was there. I would do their. Mm -hmm. I finally became their. The, I wasn't the cook. I was the decorator, mm -hmm. and then also I did the um, fancy pastries and mm -hmm. fancy cakes and stuff. Well, the record, what was the name of the temple? Temple Israel, no, Temple. Mm -hmm. Little Avenue. Yeah. Little Avenue. Um, uh, Mm -hmm. Was it Michigan to no, Not Michigan to Fella, Google Avenue Show. Mm -hmm. That was the name, okay. Google Avenue Show. Now, do you remember um, anything else about uh, wartime scrap drives? Or any? I didn't do any of that scrap drive. How about rationing? Oh, the rationing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, like I say, as I explained to you before, the mm -hmm. rationing was mostly like if you went into your store, mm -hmm. you got it because you were a regular customer. Mm -hmm. If you weren't, you would, he would say, say, that I can only give you, Mrs. Steph, Mrs. Edelman, mm -hmm. I can only give you this much today. And I said, fine, mm -hmm. I'll see what I can do tomorrow. Okay. Okay. What about, um, See, you were mentioning that some of your relatives were in the war, yeah. in the military. Uh, first, did they all get out okay? Yeah, none of them was, were killed. Mm -hmm. None of them were killed. Were they, uh, did they serve overseas? Well, it was, I think they were in Germany most of the time, weren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what uh, were they all? Army, Navy, Army, all Army. Oh, two yeah, Navy. Just one was Navy. Okay. Yeah, two Navy, two, Navy, two Navy, and one mm -hmm. Army. Yeah. Okay. But the Army one was Yuri. He was the one that was the big shot. He was the big shot. Well, he was uh, captain. As you know, then uh -huh. we called him the big shot. <laughs> And the ones who served in the Navy, did they? They were regular on, on board. Okay. Yeah. Navy, you, Navy men. Do you remember any stories about them? Did that? Did you write to them on a regular basis? They write to you. Uh, we wrote to them once a month mm -hmm. anyway, so the thing. Well, we never knew where they were. Mm -hmm. And my aunt never knew where they were, you know. She was never told. Mm -hmm. At that time, your mouth was shut. You weren't told where the people, where the men were. Mm -hmm. So I would give it to my aunt, and she would, you know, her sons and her, my cousin, Jeanette, would see if she could send them somewhere for me. Mm -hmm. But we sent at least once a month. Mm -hmm. Because once a month got it, once in three months, you know? So, uh, what did you do for entertainment? Did you go to the movies? Well, maybe once a week. Okay. <laughs> that, that's about all. Did you, have, uh, did you have a favorite? Did you like musicals, dramas, whatever there was on? Well, there's no music. Well, there were some musicals. I liked the musical. Well, my husband liked the musicals all the time, mm -hmm. but we didn't go. I went, like I said, once a month. Because mm -hmm. look, it's, the money wasn't so plentiful that you could. Mm -hmm. Not that there was a lot of money. Right. Probably was seventy-five cents or eighty cents a person, but there were two people. Mm -hmm. So that to us was money. Mm -hmm. But. Um, 
and like I said, well, once a month. The kids went during the day because it was cheaper. Mm -hmm. you know? Did they have any favorites? Cowboys. Cowboys, Cowboys and Indians. <laughs> Those were their favorites. Or it, it, even Harold Lloyd and, mm -hmm. you know, like Ab Abbott and Costello? Abbott and Costello. Abbott and Costello. Or Three Stooges, something the three, like that? No, the Three Stooges weren't in there yet. Mm -hmm. uh, Abbott and Costello, I think I can remember. But no, they went to Cowboys and Indians. Okay. They loved that. Mm -hmm. So let's get to the end of the war. Do you remember the day uh, the war ended? That would be May 7th, 1945, B.E. Day. Mm. Was there any kind of celebration? Did you hear well, it on the radio? Well, there was noise in the street, and mm -hmm. when I opened the windows, I thought something happened. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody was hurt or something. And they said, the war was over. <laughs> that it would, young kids would be young, the war was over. I said, what? They said, the war was over, no more war. Mm -hmm. I said, who won? <laughs> who do you think they said, the United <laughs> States? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, do you remember on, in August 1945 when the atomic bomb was dropped? You know, it's a very vague on that, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I, I don't think I remember. Well, was the atomic bomb dropped and that was the end of the war? Well, I was uh, in, uh, in, over in the Pacific Theater in Japan. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the United States, yes, we dropped, I can see the airplane going over, but I didn't know what it was going over for. Mm -hmm. But then again, then I heard atomic bomb. What's atomic bomb? What's atomic bomb? You know, to me, it was an explosion of the world. Mm. And uh, they said that the uh, plane dropped the atomic bomb. <laughs> I said, the United States, what? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm sure over the day. I said, my God, and who was on the plane? <laughs> I don't remember the fellows that were on the plane, but I guess now you can hear of them, mm -hmm. you know, who they were. Okay. So let's uh, push forward into the 1950s and your move to Natick. Yeah. What made you and your husband move to Natick? It wasn't me, it was my husband. Okay, so <laughs> what? He didn't want to live in Boston anymore. And he felt that some friend of his was, they were, you know, out together. And one of the fellas bought a house. And they said to him, why don't you buy this house? He said, my wife will kill me. He says, I can't buy anything without her. But he said to me when he came home, there was a house in Natick. Do you think you want to see? I said, Natick? Where's Natick? In Europe? <laughs> he said, no, it's a little town. He said, why don't you go and see it? Well, my son didn't come home with us. He stayed in Boston to my grandma, my mother's my mother's house for a month mm -hmm. before he came home to Natick. He said, I'm not going over there. But then when he came and he went into school there, he met a lot of boys, but not one Jewish boy. All Gentile boys. To this day, they're my boys. <laughs> to this day, they're so, my boys. So you, uh, you settled in West Natick, Tell us what West Natick was like in those days. Well, it was uh, just a new development, mm -hmm. single family home. We had, what well, we were on 17,000 feet of land, which is a lot of land. At that I'll time. say. Mm -hmm. And we were on that right in the corner there. 
and um, we had to hold back too. Mm -hmm. And it was so much work to do. Mm -hmm. And I, but we were. I was very lucky. Mm -hmm. I had found a man that needed a job. Mr. Mr. Wallace, mm -hmm. and he came and he helped me. Mm -hmm. He did. He came every single week. Now, was this the same George Wallace who became a conservation agent for Natick? Yeah. I remember him well. Yeah. In fact, this is a photo of you and your husband, and that, isn't that the house? Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's a house. That is. And what street was that on? Elwyn Road. Elwyn Road. And my understanding is your, your family helped establish Temple Israel. Yes. Now, before Temple Israel was in West Natick, it was, it was downtown. It was downtown right on South Avenue. Yeah, yeah. Right next to the Albanian Orthodox yeah. Church. Yeah, that's right. So um, how did South Avenue become the temple on Hartford Street? Well, it was too small. Mm -hmm. Since so many people started to move in mm -hmm. that they didn't have room enough for them. Mm -hmm. So my we come to house separate. Mm -hmm. And uh, no. Martin Serrell donated the land. Yeah. Okay, that was uh, Martin uh, and Martin Serrell offered. Yeah, Martin mm -hmm. Serrell mm -hmm. was the realtor that sold all the houses. Mm -hmm. And, and sold see. the land for the temple. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now you're not the only Jewish family in West Natick anymore, I no, take no, it. No, mm -hmm. no, no, no. The temple came up and uh, Rabbi Kushner was the first. No. Rabbi so, wasn't leaving. No, Bass. Long before Bass. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't remember his name. I might have it at home. Yeah. We should have bought it. Mm -hmm. uh, he was the first rabbi, and he too was lost practically, you know? But we have a nice group of people. Mm -hmm. I mean, because we're all stranded. We were all somewhere when we never were. We were Bostons. Mm -hmm. We were brought up in Boston, New Boston, inside out, and here we were in a small town. In the bonies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we did, I mean, we had a really build up a house, you know, the mm -hmm. place all around was like the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And didn't we, stay wilderness for long, did it? No, no, it didn't. We put trees up. We did everything. My son was very, very good. Mm -hmm. He he worked hard, and he he liked a nice house, and you know. Mm -hmm. And when he went to the school, I'm telling you, all Gentile boys went to my son. Mm -hmm. They liked him. Mm -hmm. Then they were my, they're my boys mm -hmm. still. Mm -hmm. What else do you remember about living in Natick during that time? Well, there wasn't much to do when I learned how to drive. Because mm -hmm. if you didn't drive, you're nowhere. Mm -hmm. There was no buses or anything right. that you could do now. And um, I would drive to the store once a week, get what I needed to and come back home again. Now, what store did you go to? I'm kind of curious about that. Because, of course, uh, uh, Route 9 was just being expanded. Just, yeah. I think it was... Uh, was it the co-op in Natick Center? No, no, no. no. It was a... Um, I remember it's a red building, was it? What was the name of it? Do you remember the name of it? Mr. Sintolo in Framingham? No, since he was 
he had a single place down there. Mm -hmm. He was a, like a owned a place. He went into them, you paid 10 cents more for everything, mm -hmm. you know. One of those kind of yeah, stuff. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but everybody went there. He, mm -hmm. he made a good living. Um, I think I went to, I can see it's a red building. Was it in Natick or in Farmington? Uh, Natick. It was Natick. in Natick, okay. Yeah. Downtown Natick. Well, in the, what, what street now? The big street? Route 9? Not Route 9, off of Route 9. 27 Main Street? West Central? No, that's further down. No. Hartford? Uh, Hartford. Okay. Right off of Hartford Street. Mm -hmm. And we lived in the own road. Mm -hmm. So they all new homes, single homes, that everybody that, you know, moved. Mm -hmm moved in and then you got to know one another. In fact, one of them was Gentile living next to me when she moved in, when she mm -hmm. came from, um, Excuse me. yeah, she was in the military and, mm -hmm. and she came in and, but we were, came the closest friends. You know, my house was right there and hers was right here mm -hmm. where you're sitting. Oh, wow. So did any of your children um, go into the military themselves? No? No. Or any of your grandchildren? No, no. just my cousin. Mm -hmm. He was in the military and his brother? No. Two Liebers. Two Liebers. Two of my aunt's mm -hmm. sons were in and my cousin was mm -hmm. in. But the other two were just regular Navy men. Mm -hmm. And one went into Vietnam War. Mm, yeah, one went, went to Vietnam. Vietnam. One went to Vietnam, all right. Uh, looking back on World War II, uh, what are your thoughts about whether the, um, our intervention in World War II, uh, whether that was good, bad? Well, well, at that time, all I could think of was a, the youngsters going into war. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was time. I said, my God, if any one of mine, I think I would die. I mean, you know, and you heard this one's son was killed. That one, it was a terrible thing. Mm -hmm. And we, do, we thought it was terrible, but they, mine were too young yet to go in. Mm -hmm. So they could, they didn't go in, but my cousin was in. Yeah. He was, he was in, I think he was the captain. Was the captain in yeah. it? Yeah. Did you, uh, did he ever speak about his, his experiences? Or the ones that, uh, who served in the Navy, did they ever say anything about? Not much. Not much? I mean, Aunt Rose is good mm -hmm. boys. And things. I mean, just said that, they had a good time, but they wouldn't say what kind of a good time they had, mm -hmm. but they said they had a good time. Yeah. Well, they were on the, bat one was on the battleship. Mm -hmm. But that was all they, they'd rather say? Yeah, they wouldn't say too much. Have, I think you have to shut your mouth. Mm -hmm. Now, have your cousins passed on since? Are they all, di uh, have they all died? One, one is still alive. alive. One is still alive, okay. Mm -hmm. And which one is that? Joey on the ship. All right. But he and doesn't live here. Mm -hmm. no. no. He lives in Florida. Okay. Now, um, my understanding before the interview, uh, your husband passed on rather early. Yeah. And you ended up working at Keefe Tech. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, uh, back in the 1970s or so? Mm. When you were teaching the kids. Yeah. They, well, I was teaching the children. Well, there were boys and girls who were very at I mean, risk. They weren't taken care of. They mm -hmm. were running. You know, they were wild, mm -hmm. and they were some of them were going into a jail. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. It's, you know, they were 16, 17 years old. What we'd probably call at-risk youth. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And I'd be, uh, I would teach them how to cook, how to do, you know, take care of food and everything. Mm-hmm. And they liked it. They really did. Uh-huh. With like um, uh, um, something that they felt that they were That they could do something useful. No, that wasn't it. They felt that the, it was a mind calming or ah, something, mm-hmm. you know? That's the way they felt. And how long did you do that at Keep Tech? Was it three years, four years? Three years? Yeah. Do you still bake? Oh, all the time. <laughs> For myself. Yeah. Uh, what are the, some of the favorite things you like to bake? Uh, coffee cakes. Uh, my cup of <laughs> sour cream coffee cake that everybody dies for. Red cake, mm-hmm. red, red cake, chocolate red, cake. Yeah, the red. And hopefully it, your recipes will be handed down to another generation. Yeah, we've already got a book. We got mm-hmm. a book. Good for you, Sadie. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Uh, for those who will be watching this in the near future? Well, all I can say is be yourself. Mm-hmm. I mean, try and do good for somebody. If you see somebody needs help, help them. Mm-hmm. If you can afford to help them that way, but make sure they all go to school. Mm-hmm. That's my favorite thing. You must have an education. Indeed. You've got to be somebody. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to take out a book and see that you can read it. See the newspaper. You could read what's going on. Mm -hmm. That's my thing. You have to know. You have to go to school. Mm -hmm. And if you can't go to, you can go to public school, everybody's allowed to go. Mm-hmm. Make sure you do. You have to work, so you work after time. Go half a days, but don't play hooky. Well, Sadie Stepner, on that, we'd like to thank you so much for coming in and taking oh, it's part my pleasure. in the Native Veterans Oral History Project. I so. hope everybody really, really, really does what I tell them to do. Just Mm -hmm. be good to people. I mean, don't try to hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's bad enough living in a hard time, but Mm -hmm. don't make it harder. Mm -hmm. 